Right. Hey, how you guys doing? So this is Neil. I'll be showing you guys how I paint this here in Photoshop to get that traditional painting look. And just to show you, we'll be going step by step and going through all the tips and stuff and the brushes I use and and things like that and how to get that how to get that traditional look that I get here. And if you like traditional painting, you know, you actually want to learn how to do traditional painting mainly in acrylics. I'm also teach oils too, but mainly the channel's focus on acrylics. And it's not just abstract, but that's also what it it, it kind of focus on abstract, but abstract with with meaning abstract that looks like that actually looks like something and anyway so it teaches like painting acrylic techniques and stuff like that we'll learn how to paint all kinds of uh, cool stuff and so I put a couple on this channel but definitely check out my new channel the thing will be up here so just check up here click on that little thing that comes up at the top of the video just click on that and then it'll take you to the new channel and it's uh yeah so acrylic abstract I don't know let me see what is my channel these are all my channels right here and it's this one, Abstract Painting Techniques. But anyway, I'll have the link up there, and I'll also have the link, and I'll put the link in the description of this video. But let's get started on how to do this uh, painting here. All right, so the first thing is you see the different brushes I have here, and I highly recommend these brushes. Um, it's really hard to create this brush, and or these brushes that this guy uses. He has a really, really cool, um, I can't scroll down, duh, I'm not in the program, but he has this really nice uh, texture to his brushes that, I haven't found anywhere else, so it's it's really awesome. But this is the guy's name right here. Uh, you can find the brushes there. You can find all you really have to do is get his. Um, I think this one is from that's yeah, the Gumroad two pack. I think it is. But yeah, um, pretty much he has all the same brushes in all his different packs. So just get the the cheapest one, and that will have the brushes that you need. I only use like two or three of them. They're really awesome. Uh, but anyway, there's other ones here by M A um, Michael something. Can't remember the exact name. But if you just type in the uh, oil and acrylic brushes by MA, uh, that's a pretty good brush pack too. It has a lot of cool uh, trees and stuff like that. So if you like doing the more natural thing, it's really cool. Also, I have free brushes for those that don't already know. Uh, just sign up to my website, masterpaintingnow.com. The link is also in the description. You can go ahead and sign up for the newsletter for free. And you get to get my free brushes for both Krita and my Bob Ross brushes for Krita and for um, Paintstorm. All right, so anyway, let's continue on with this Photoshop. So first thing I do is I, I start off with a sketch. Now notice here I have this interesting variation of color. Now this is very hard to do traditionally. Well, it's not hard, it's just time consuming. And you have to like take your brush, get multiple colors on it, and just keep like dabbing everywhere uh, across the painting to get this kind of look here. And it's, it's a really cool look and it's really easy to get in Photoshop. As you see, I got it there very fast with a few brush strokes. And that's done by using uh, color color dynamics. So you want to set the color dynamics. I set the uh, brightness and contrast I think to about six and then the hue and saturation to about six. There's three different settings. I, I set them all to six sometimes. Just depends on the look you want. Just mess with those settings. Maybe try setting um, brightness and contrast to, to two or one and then hue and saturation to six, something like that. And it gives you really interesting results. So just mess around with that and make sure there's two different clicks you can do. One, one button you click on it and it'll change the I should probably play this while I'm doing this. One will actually change the uh, per stroke. It'll change every time you make a new stroke. It changes it. The other one does multiple colors in one stroke, and that's what I'm using here. Now I'm using a bigger brush. I realized I didn't really like how small the texture was. And notice the same thing. Look, I'm getting all these different, um, slightly different colors and variations, and that's using the color dynamics. And I know you can't really see it on this screen right now, but there's a lot of texture in this painting too. Here, in fact, let me show you the texture. This is my comic book, A DD Reborn. Let's see here. Um, or a graphic novel, rather. What was I doing again? Oh, yeah. And then I think I have it under, I think I have this one listed under abstract, even though it's technically not abstract, yeah. So you can see it has a lot of texture to it. And if I go a little bit closer, you can see all this texture everywhere. And that texture is included in those brushes, and it's just uh, really awesome. I do most of, the, most of the entire painting with just one brush. So, all right, so continuing on here, um, this is the brush I mainly use right here. This is the shape it looks like when you have it big on Photoshop. So I forget what, exactly what brush that is. Maybe I actually show it here in the video. Yeah, right here, it's this one here. I think it's this one. Sample brush 2 and then 54, and this is in his Gumroad 2-pack. 
and it makes this a nice brush stroke as well so just alone by itself you just make a brush stroke with it it's pretty nice now one thing you notice about these brushes is they're hard brushes meaning they're not soft at all and they don't have any flow or anything dynamic set to them so you can't blend with these brushes um, but how I sometimes do get a slight blend with them is go back and forth over an area like I just did there and it gives you this kind of um, see it's like little lines little texture lines going back and forth and I can take the other color and just kind of work back and forth like that and get this kind of not really a blend but kind of a transition and uh, that that looks really nice and this gives you that more traditional look because um, typically with traditional paints you don't do a lot of blending um, I mean you can I guess if you want to but typically a lot of things in and painting doesn't have a whole lot of blending in it I really want that textured look here. It looks really nice when you work with Photoshop like that. Notice I'm doing my clouds with that exact same brush, as you can see here. Like I said, I pretty much do the whole painting with this one brush. I just wanted to see like what would it look like if I just used just one brush for the whole painting. I typically, even when I work traditionally, I usually just use one brush. Um, sometimes I'll use more than one, but maybe different sizes, but the same kind of brush. I use like a Filbert. I like Filberts a lot. Sometimes I, I use angle brushes too, depending on what I'm doing. And the key here to getting the realistic look to traditional painting is when you do traditional painting with color theory, you don't want to just use like one color for skin or just a couple colors for skin. You want to use a bunch of varieties. So you make your base skin tone. And uh, I usually use, for, for example, I really like I really like using Cronacridone Magenta and uh, cadmium yellow medium or even yellow ochre together and that makes the base and then you add just a little bit of uh, that makes kind of this orangish color and then you add a little bit of white that makes it look more peachy and then just add a little bit of blue I mean the tiniest amount of blue maybe a, a weaker blue so it's not so you don't accidentally use too much because thalo blue is really strong so I'll use something like uh, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue or even just a little bit of uh, burnt umber will we'll tone it down so it's not so bright but just a little bit of blue kind of grays it out just a little bit and it gives it that's a really good base tone and then from that you want to add things like a little bit more red to it or a little bit more yellow to it um, not just not just a little bit a little bit of darker or light you know um, to add a color variation throughout your skin tones and so I'll, I'll constantly add little things to that base color I might add a little bit of uh, Payne's gray to it um, I might add a little bit of a little bit more blue to it um, to make it a little bit more grayish and a little bit of purple to it, dioxy dioxidine purple I think that's what it's called and so forth so so now I'm doing this kind of haze thing over it I'm using soft light as you can see up here so I set the mode of the brush to soft light and get this nice hazy look this is something really cool about traditional or not excuse me, about digital painting that you it's really hard to do traditionally and you can do glazes and stuff like that but um, it's just a lot harder like this is so much faster digitally to do things like this you can change things very quickly with digital work so that gives me that kind of that kind of color I want so the same thing I did to the sky I did down here so I'm just taking the brush and I'm just going over it using color dynamics to give me all these color variations and it's a really quick way to get color variations and we'll go ahead and fast forward here same thing I'm just I'm laying down blocks of color right now using that same brush and uh, using color dynamics so that I get a little bit of color variation and everything. So even in this color here, this color here, whatever base color I pick, the color dynamics are working. So it's gonna give me a bunch of varieties of that color that I pick. And then I'm gonna start by putting dark in the background for the trees. And whenever you paint from photo, I highly recommend to change that photo. And so that's what I did here, I changed the photo a lot. Hold on, I'm going to pause this really fast. All right, sorry about that. So let's go ahead and fast forward here. So I just lay down the dark colors here just to, and then and then what I do is I, I come in and I add the medium tones. This is very similar to like how Bob Ross would paint. And this is common for how you paint in acrylics from dark to light. Um, not everyone that works in oils will work that way. But if you can if you can manage it with oils like Bob Ross by using the right, you know, using a thinner paint first and get a little bit thicker with the other layer so it sticks to it. And then if you get too thick, then you have to go really, really thin to get it to, th to stick to that. But uh, anyway, it's a very similar technique like that, but doing it digital. 
So you start with your dark, your darkest tone, then you do your mid-tone, and then you put a little bit of light on top of that. Also, when you do this, make sure to use color variation. So don't just do, um, by color variation here, I'm not just referring to color dynamics, but the actual colors you're using. A tree isn't just green, so don't just use greens for your tree. Notice here I'm using a type of green for the mid-tone, a kind of darker reddish color for the, for the shadows. For the highlight, it's more of like a, a yellowish color and a yellowish green. And then I'm using some, you can look here, very desaturated um, orange red for, and notice how it almost looks purple next to these things. And so I don't, I just you want to use a lot of variety of colors, especially like in your shadows and light. So the, even in the mid tone sometimes I'll, I'll use slightly different variations of maybe throw a little, little couple lines of blue in there, like a couple strokes of blue and a couple strokes of something else within the mid tone. So if it's green, I'll throw a few, a few blue strokes in the, in the mid tone and maybe a few, uh, I don't know, yellow green, de de desaturated color. So it just kind of adds some variety to what I'm doing. Do the same thing with, with traditional paints too. That's why you work in, in a lot of layers, especially if you're doing acrylics, you want to add a lot of layers. Notice here I'm adding all kinds of color now to my trees. I, I even used um, soft light overlay there for a second. And so now here I'm using soft light again. And notice when you use soft light with the, with the textured brush, it really brings out the texture a lot. And so this is to add that that sunshine look. I, I, I just kind of felt like my painting was looking a little bit dull. And if you ever feel like your painting is looking, notice I, I did the same thing over here. So after I added all these colors, I went and hit it with the same yellow color, but set it to soft light so it kind of alters the colors underneath it. It's kind of like a glaze and it works really, really nice. You can also try overlay if you want a little bit stronger of effect. And then let's go ahead and continue adding this everywhere. And then now you can see I went ahead and I added another color that's more gray, like right here, see? So this is normal, notice it's a little bit more on the gray side, so I'm not way over here where it's nice and bright, I'm starting to go toward the gray side of that color. And I'm adding that to add this kind of, almost like I treat this in a very similar way to I treat as I treat blonde hair, using more grayed out uh, yellows, which is how you do blonde hair. Adding some tan there into the ground. The main thing here is I'm, I work impressionistically, so it's an easy way to get that painterly style is instead of trying to make everything look super realistic, if you work super realistic with a lot of rendering and stuff with details, the end result looks more digital. It just, it's really hard to get that traditional look if you go too, too realistic with it. But I mean, you can still see it looks, impression, impressionism can look, can look realistic but in this, in this impressionistic way. Like these don't like look like real trees in the background, but they look very stylized. That's what I love about impressionism. And so here I'm just, I'm using, notice I'm using this uh, same brush, but I'm just adding little marks here and there. I'm like just tapping with my mouse, I think right now. I'm just tapping the color in there. Either that I'm just, just tapping with my pen, one of the two. And I'm going back and forth between using dark colors and using light colors. And because notice this brush, when you tap with it, see how the brush it doesn't it has a bunch of little dots and everything. That's what the brush, the brush tip is looks like. It's really good to get nice little texture with it that way. So it's a very versatile brush. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fast forward again. I drew in some individual shapes there. So notice here with the skin tone. So I start with this kind of you know more more grayed out. There's another thing. Don't get too saturated with your skin tones unless you're going for a specific, specific kind of look. But if you're trying to go more, looking more, um, tr or looking more realistic, then you want to stick to more neutralized colors. By neutralized, I mean adding gray into it. And with traditional colors, this doesn't mean adding black and white. That is, don't, don't add like traditional gray to, to dull it down. To dull down colors with traditional, it's always, you always want to use the complementary color. So if you're working with green, the complementary color is red. And so to make a green less bright, you add a little bit of red to it and it, and it neutralizes it. Kind of, you know, desaturates it. So notice here I'm using three main colors right now. I'm using this kind of darker color here. And I'm allowing it, notice that I don't even fill in, the, I don't fill in these blanks. I allow the color underneath to kind of bleed through, adding some variation to the skin tone. 
And I had to turn the background off first to paint that to make sure that it looked right to me. And just adding some darker color here. Notice this color is similar to, but it's a little bit more red. So I took this base tone, made it more red, and made it a little bit more saturated. So now I have four different colors happening in the skin. Then I'll go and I'll just add little marks here and there of other colors like desaturated red, which looks kind of purple. And here I'm using a really, really saturated red because I want this part to look like the sun is really hitting her skin. Then I kind of dull it down with some peachy color. Pretty much the same things happening here. Now the dress, notice here I'm, I use that base color. So there's a base color here, but notice I'm allowing some of that background to show through. And I even painted some of the background color right here, just very loosely, so it kind of adds a little bit of texture to it. And then I'm using a lighter version of this color, and but up and to the left, so it makes it also more desaturated. And, and you can even get more impressionistic with this. You can go, hey, the sunlight here is yellow, so you can add more of a yellowish, or at least start to pull this down toward yellow like into the green, whatever. And that will add an interesting look as well. So that's where you really mess with colors, is in the highlights and shadows. By highlights, in this case, I don't mean actual highlights, I mean direct light, uh, where, where the direct light is hitting the object. But, but fabric doesn't really change color when light hits it. I mean, it does get lighter, but it only gets a little bit lighter. Fabric, um, it depends on the kind of fabric, but like cotton, for example, doesn't have a high reflectivity, so the color is going to barely change. It'll become a little bit uh, brighter and less saturated where the light's hitting it. Sometimes even more saturated, but typically the midtones are the, more, the most saturated. And then the shadows are just going to be a darker version of that color. Um, but don't just like go up and down. So for the dark color, go down and to the right. So it's down and then a little more saturated, up and to the left. So so if this is my, this right here is my midtone, my direct light would be up and to the left my shadow will be down and to the right. And then I also like to change this too, change the color a little bit uh, for the shadow. And the highlight just makes it look better. So you can see there I'm adding this, see this desaturated blue? It almost looks like purple or something. Look, it's not even that desaturated. If I get more desaturated, it'll look even like another color. It's a really interesting trick. Um, you know, when you neutralize colors, it almost like, for example, if I'm paint, painting in the skin tone, sometimes just neutralizing red, so taking adding green to my red until it's neutralized and looks looks more grayish. When I add that color on top of the flesh tone, sometimes it actually looks kind of like a purple color, like a, but it's not. It's actually red. So it's really interesting how that works. The same thing happens digitally. It's just a optic illusion of how colors look when they're next to each other. And so with here, I start with this darker color. In fact, here, let's go ahead and go through this real fast. So you can see here the color is saturated. It's down and to the right, and because I'm starting with the dark color first, the, the under color. The, this is going to be one of the darkest colors in the hair. And then I'm using a very saturated lighter color because I wanted her hair to really look like it's being hit by the sun. And then, But notice how it's changing here as well. I'm not, I'm not just leaving it one color, I'm going up into the orange more. So it starts off kind of red, and watch it changes to, see that? Now it's more orange. And then now I'm going even more orange, so I'm going up even higher. So I, I move this up and I come up here. So I'm not just leaving it the same color and just coming up here. Also change, don't just leave it. If you start at red, start moving toward yellow as you're changing your colors. This isn't typically how you would how you would paint blonde hair. I went very stylistic with this. Notice this is almost going toward green. And I'm adding still more colors, variation. And I kind of I like this. I like this really saturated look for this particular painting. And look at all that texture, lovely texture in this brush. And um, I like that. I like it to look loose. You know, from a distance it reads kind of like realism. The hair, but the hair has this kind of stylistic look to it. I really like that. So, um, yeah, maybe I should title this How to Paint Traditional Impressionism in Photoshop or something, because this really is an impressionistic painting. It's not, it's not, it's not realism. And here's one of the final touches I like to do to my paintings. I like to add 
one of my signature colors is this fuchsia color, especially my digital work. I like to just add that color here and there in a few places and it just makes it makes it kind of pop. And uh, I usually like to go around, at, at, after I'm done with the painting, I like to go around and just add tiny little brush strokes of different colors. And honestly, as long as they're of the same, they're within the same value range. So if I'm painting on this part of the on the painting, I want to make sure it's of the same value. But I want to alter the color. So one way to do it would be to color sample this color here, and then on the color pick over here, just take this and move it up or down, and then go a little bit saturated, and then just paint a couple little areas with that color, and it'll add variation within your shadow. And you can do the same thing with the midtones, and and, and then the, where the direct light's hitting it. And with traditional color, with traditional paints, how you do that is in a very similar way. You would, uh, let me go ahead and see if there's anything else to this. Nope, that's it. So in, in traditional painting, what you would do is you would, um, I'll go ahead and just go back and play something here. I'm not sure what yet. Something right about here. So with traditional paints, how you would, how you would accomplish that is after you're done with your painting, you can go through and go, okay, I remember I used this color for the dress as a midtone, or maybe you still have that color on your palette. If you use an acrylic, it's probably already dried. Um, but you can recreate it. That's one thing with acrylics, you want to rem remember like kind of how you made the color. And so then you would go back and you would make that color again, or take the color if it's already there, and then take that color and add a little bit of something else to it. So I'll add the complementary color, that's the first step. So let's say the, the dress is blue, so I might add a little bit of yellow. Um, yellow typically will well, that makes green. Yellow will typically, you want to use orange technically, because yellow will, yellow is good for, it'll neutralize purple. Orange will neutralize blue. If you're ever wondering what the, just get a little color wheel, look at a color wheel online. The colors that are opposite on the color wheel, that's your complementary color. That's what'll gray out the color. And so I think blue is orange. And uh, you can also, to neutralize blue, you can use burnt sienna, works really good. Um, and so then I would neutralize my blue so that it's a little bit on the gray side and I would add that color, uh, there's a few strokes, little small strokes here and there um, in certain areas of the shadow and then I would go, okay, that because that was my shadow color, let's say it was kind of a bluish shadow color and then I would uh, add a little bit of the color to it, maybe add a little bit of purple to it to alter its flavor a little bit and I'd add that color a few places and uh, just really makes a nice look to a painting by adding these different color variations. And a lot of the master painters did this. Um, you might not notice it. Like if you look at a Rembrandt portrait, if you can get a high quality photo that was taken, so you can see the texture of the paint and stuff of a Rembrandt photo, you can see he uses a lot of actual individual color strokes. Sometimes you'll see a almost pure orange red right around the eye area. Like just boom, just a brush stroke of almost pure orange or red. And um, you'll have, you know, like you'll almost see like a kind of desaturated almost looks like green, just bam, a little brush stroke like right in the cheek area somewhere. And it's actually not, so. Oh yeah, I wanna save your work, <laughs> so it's important. I actually went quite a while before I saved, so I, I always forget to do that. You wanna save, there you go, look at that. See that change right there? Let's go watch this last part and then we'll call it good. So adding the soft light, I'm using this bright yellow with soft light, and look at that, look how much it alters the color. You just lightly touch it with that texture brush and it just makes a really nice look. You know, it'd be really hard to get this kind of look with a different brush. Um, I've tried different brushes and each each kind of texture brush gives its own look. So this particular look is unique to this to this brush set, to this texture he uses. So I'd recommend checking it out. Just watch the beginning of the video again if you don't know what uh, brush set that is. Um, that's it, thank you for watching. Go ahead and like and subscribe. And so make sure when you subscribe, hit the little bell notification. Oh, by the way, if you haven't been on my, if you if you were subscribed to my site a long time ago, do me a favor, unsubscribe and then resubscribe and re-hit the bell notifications. That will make sure that you get the updates because if you don't do that, you're probably not getting notified. Um, so that's how to get notified. And unfortunately, a lot of people, these are all my other videos, by the way. And, uh, oh, yeah, that one did pretty good. I wonder what, I wonder what made that one do so good all of a sudden. Typically, my channel is dead, see? It's like hard to get views anymore because even though I have like over 80,000 subscribers, YouTube did something and it screwed me um, to where it's hard for them to see when I post new videos and stuff, but oh well, it is what it is. But hey, definitely join that new channel if you want to learn how to paint traditionally because it's a lot of fun. 
and it's really not that expensive if you use like acrylics. It's even not that expensive if you use oils. You, know, you just you only need to start with a few colors, three colors. You can make black with three color, three primary colors. That's all you need to get started. Um, and I'll be teaching how to do color mixing and things like that, how to make all colors with just with color mixing and a few color mixing techniques, and you're on your way. And uh, you know, learning the brushes and stuff. It's it's a lot of fun. It's very relaxing. I like to meditate while I paint. And yeah, definitely. So if you want to learn how to traditionally paint, then definitely join my other channel. And I'll see you guys over there. That's the main channel I'm going to be focusing on. Um, so yeah, I'm really trying to build that up because I really want to teach people the joy of painting. And uh, this channel I'll still do videos on as well. I'm just that, I want that to be my main focus. I want to try to build that channel up because I, just traditional painting is something about it. Uh, the joy of painting is really awesome. And I want to bring that joy to people like Bob Ross did. So, all right, until next time, guys, bye.